I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It was a brilliant blue sky today. Sun mm-hmm. was shining. I and know. when I got up this morning, it was six degrees. <laughs> I but know. it was a beautiful six it degrees. It was a very bright day, which I appreciate as we're inching closer to spring. And it's still fairly light again. It's getting mm-hmm. brighter. And you and I are recording this later in the day. And it's Some still spring out. is right around the corner. Mm-hmm. So when I sent you the post with the title Old Rags or Much More, what were your thoughts, <laughs> especially thinking this was supposed to be a monument? I had no thoughts. It is <laughs> no surprise to any of our listeners that American history, actually history of all types, uh, is not my strong suit. Um, so I had to ask a lot of clarifying questions <laughs> before we recorded this. But I think now that I've read the post and know what we're talking about, that is a very clever title. You know, and, and really... um. So I actually, just to share with our listeners what I already shared with you was, I was reading a book um, that referred to the American flag at one point, and I had this idea, wait, can I get away with calling the American flag a monument? So I asked engineer Tim, and he says, sure, you can do that. So I did, and now, I was always told that Betsy Ross sewed the first flag. That's what they taught me in school. Mm -hmm. And you said the same thing. Yeah. We have been lied to our entire life because historians believe that Betsy Ross did not sew the first flag. That in fact, the first flag to be sewn and flown in these wonderful United States of America happened on August 3rd, 1777 in a fort not far away from us, maybe, what, 45-minute ride to the east of us? Mm -hmm. It was known as Fort Schuyler at the time. I think sometimes it's called Fort Stanwix. But truth be told, so here's what happened. This is what I put in my post, that on June 14th, 1777, the Continental Congress passed the flag resolution. That's why Flag Day is June 14th. And it's, it was a very simple resolution that basically said that there should be this flag and it should, it should be made up of stars and stripes and gave the colors and that type of thing. But that was it. It was, it was fairly vague. And what happened was that there, there were about 700 men and a few women inside the fort uh, in what is now Rome, New York. And they were faced, they were, they were being approached by a couple thousand loyalists, uh, Native Americans who were fighting for Great Britain. So basically the British forces are on their way to kind of take over the fort. And the thought was that if they could take over that fort, they could gain control of the entire Mohawk Valley and, and kind of put a wedge in between the colonies, those in the, in the western New York part and, and anything east of the Mohawk Valley. And... And that, that that wedge would run its way all the way down into Pennsylvania. Um, so while these folks, they had heard about the, the flag resolution, and I found this amazing. So this is the leadership lesson that I got out of this. So here they are. They're faced with this incredibly dire situation, and they decide to make a flag. So they took their white shirts. The men took their white shirts and cut them up. They used red flannel from the petticoats of the officers' wives. And then there was a Captain Abraham Swartwout who had a blue cloth coat, and they cut up his coat for the blue, and they sewed the very first American flag. And they raised it up sometime mid-morning on the 3rd of August in a way of defying the danger and inspiring themselves to, pardon the pun, hold the fort Mm -hmm. until help would arrive. And I thought, what a great leadership lesson that you, they found a way to raise something that the folks could look at. There was a vision, call it vision casting, 
you know, that this is what we stand for. This is why we are here to defend these 13 new states, so to speak, of this new United States of America. And, and I thought, what a, that, that to me, that was a great leadership lesson, was that we need things, we need to have things that our teams can look up to, can look at, to inspire them to move on. So that was kind of the exciting thing about me digging into the flag. Now, one of the things I wrote um, in the post was that, you know, people would really need to listen to this podcast to find out who came to rescue the fort. And believe it or not, this you'll find rather humorous. It was troops led by Major General Benedict Arnold. Wow. Which I just thought was humorous. Mm -hmm. So the traitor, Benedict Arnold, before he became a traitor, actually came with his troops to rescue the fort. Mm -hmm. The fort where the very first flag flew. So let's talk a little bit about the flag. Yeah. George Washington gave some instructions. He said, We take the stars from heaven, the red from the mother country, separated by white stripes, thus showing that we have separated from her, and the white stripes will go down to, pos- to posterity representing liberty, and the 13 stars represent the 13 colonies, and they are placed in a blue sea a sea of blue Mm -hmm. now if you if you read some of the other um do some some history type stuff there were also things that different colors meant valor and this and that but george washington actually said those things right from the start so betsy ross you had asked the question so is betsy ross like was she real yeah she she was real Um, But the story of Betsy Ross sewing the first flag does not appear in history anywhere until 1870 when her grandson, William Canby, says, my grandma sewed the first American flag for George Washington. Hmm. So did families talk a little bit about something that might not have been true? Could be. We do know she was a seamstress. We know that she did do a lot of work for, for George Washington. Mm-hmm. Uh, she did a lot of work on his shirts. We also know that the state of Pennsylvania paid her to sew um, standards or flags that would be used for their ships, their sailing vessels. Other seamstresses in Philadelphia at the time were also, there's records of the, the state paying them. So that yes, there is there was a Betsy Ross, and yes, she did make flags, but... She may not have been the person that, so, the well, she wouldn't have been unless she was in Fort Schuyler <laughs> in, in August. Here's another interesting thing. So historians do believe that New Jersey's Francis Hopkins, who was a naval flag designer, who also was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, had actually developed the flag as we know it today with the 13 stars and the, 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 the stripes. Um, And we know that because he sent a letter to Congress requesting, get this, a quarter cask of public wine as payment for his work on the flag. They denied it because they said his work on the flag and the seal of the United States um, and other projects was part of his duties as a member of the Continental Congress. (laughs) So they weren't going to pay him extra. Yeah. That's funny. So you talked about when you were in school, things that you got to do with the flag. Why don't you share that? Yeah, I, I am probably 99% sure this doesn't happen in schools anymore. But um, when I was in school, the six, I think it was the sixth graders were um, responsible for raising the flag and taking the flag down and folding it properly each that is school so day. Cool. And it was, uh, you know, it was on a rotating basis that you'd get paired up with another student. And in the morning, you'd go out and you'd raise the flag. And before the end of the day, you'd you'd fold it up and return it to its case, um, which I thought was really special. And I think yes. there's a lot of things that I don't know about flags, but um, I thought that was really one, some of, just one of those 
pieces of American history, like knowing how to properly fold the flag um, and that reverence of putting right, the flag right. up every day. So um, that was just kind of my my first flag memory. Um, That's great. And I, I wish I wish schools still do that. I, maybe they do. I don't know. Or maybe you have to be a little bit older. But um, you said your yeah, kids did I, that in school, right? My kids, my kids did it in school. Um, at least I think they did because they talked about going out or maybe they just did it on flag day i'm not sure so yeah. you know flag day is june 14th because mm-hmm. that was the day the the flag resolution was was first passed mm-hmm. um but i but i do know that like when i was in school we didn't do it mr russo was the custodian that did but we used to love to watch him mm-hmm. and and you could tell that this man there was a sense of reverence that he had for the flag and 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 he would take it down and i remember there was a railing inside the the school that went from the ground level upstairs to second floor and then downstairs into the the basement it was this beautiful um railing and he would lay the flag very carefully on that railing especially if it was a damp day so that it could dry out overnight now you know people can go online and do searches on flag etiquette and things um you're not supposed to fly the flag in inclement weather you can mm-hmm. fly a flag at night, but only if it has a light on it. Mm-hmm. Now, this was one that my dad used to tell me, and I had shared with you or shared on a podcast earlier, that that you can't wear the flag as clothing. And I thought, well, it's probably just something my dad said. But no, there is a flag code which bans the use of, of the flag as clothing. Mm-hmm. And I love the way they put it. That's right. Not USA t-shirts, bandanas, or bikinis should be worn <laughs> as an American flag or a flag as that those garments. Uh-huh. Yeah, that I learned that from you only maybe a couple years ago when we talked about it on another podcast episode. Yeah. And it always bothered me when I would see people with like flag pants and flag shirts. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I just don't think that's right. Now, there, I also thought when I, this is something I learned that not only did I was taught incorrectly about Betsy Ross. But I was also taught that if a flag touched the ground, it had to be burned. Well, no, that's not true. Flags should not touch the ground, but the only time you dispose of a flag is if it is torn Mm -hmm. or worn out, in which case you either burn it or bury it. I didn't know you could bury it. I think I did. But we shouldn't shouldn't be throwing flags into the garbage. Mm -hmm. Um, So here's some more things about the colors. Uh, so the red is for valor and liberty. The white is for purity. And the blue is for justice and loyalty. So that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Now, did you know this, that there were 27 official versions of the American flag? I did not until right before this when I pulled up yeah, the Wikipedia. It, and it kind of made sense because every time we added a state, we needed a new flag. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I am right looking at them right now. There's um, different arrangements of the stars. Of the stars. And now this I did not know, but I thought was great. So when you get toward the end of the 50s, we're going from 48 states to 59 to 60. So we... Alaska was added, and then Hawaii was added. So now we have fifty states. So what? And actually, this has been the longest period that the flag has stayed consistent. Yeah. The flag design that was designed in 1958. So what happened was, uh, President Eisenhower made this a contest, and there were 1,500 submissions of designs for the flag, and the winner of it was a 17-year-old high school student whose name was Robert G. Heft of Lancaster, Ohio. Ironically, so the president thinks this is the nicest-looking flag design, so that's what's now going to be the standard for the flag of the United States of America, and his teacher gave him a B-minus on the (laughs) project. I mean, I would have I would have appealed. He's got the presidential stamp of approval. Said, Wait, exactly. The, I have the presidential stamp of approval, and you're going to give me a B minus. Mm-hmm. But anyways, thanks to Robert G. Heft of Lancaster, Ohio, we have the flag that we've been seeing ever since. Well, I've been alive because I was born in '61. Mm-hmm. There is some other uh, some interesting things. So. The poem that we took our national anthem from, 
that Francis Scott Key wrote, he wrote while on a ship in Baltimore Harbor, actually as a prisoner, and he was watching a 15-star flag flying above Fort McHenry. And while, because we get in the rockets, red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof to the night that our flag was still there. So as he's looking out through a porthole in this ship, he is, the flag is being illuminated by, you know, the rockets and things, the explosions. Mm -hmm. And the neat part is that a um, few years back, might have been in 2016, um, my son Tim and I went to Washington, D.C., and at the Smithsonian, that flag is is on display. Oh, wow. And it's really cool to see the flag that flew above Fort McHenry that Francis Scott Gee was looking at when he penned the words that we now have as our national anthem. So just some really cool flag details. Yeah, I guess, it, you know, never too early to start preparing for Flag Day. That's right. <laughs> you know, um, six American flags were actually placed on the moon. Wow. Five of those American flags are still standing. However, Neil Armstrong's flag that he placed during the Apollo 11 mission has tipped over. So we need to get SpaceX to get our astronauts back up there. <laughs> To stand up to fix it. Neil Armstrong's flag. Because it's got to be fixed. You can't mm -hmm. have a flag laying down. It just isn't, it isn't proper. Mm -hmm. We know that we won't have to burn it, um, but we will have to at least get it standing upright. F folks probably know that whenever there is um, a death of someone of notable stature um, or some type of a tragedy like 9-11, that the flags are flown at at half mast for mm -hmm. or half staff for um 30 days typically they're flown at half mast for 30 days mm -hmm. so why do you think here's what i when i ask my my curveball question mm -hmm. so why do you think the flag is so meaningful to us as a country yeah, or as even as people, because, you know, when you talked about your ability to go out, the opportunity to go out mm -hmm. and raise and lower the flag, that meant something to you. Yeah, I think for most countries, I think it's a sense of loyalty and camaraderie around it. Like it's yeah. something that is universal for all of us. I don't think we have the same, like, I don't think our state flags right. have a similar feeling. Um I mean, I, I, you know, we recognize our state flag, but we don't see it as often. But the sure, and it's not something that unifies the entire country. It's more of a, on a smaller scale. But I think right um, that I, I don't know. I think that flags are symbols, yep. right? And um, I don't know. I guess that that's what I think. I sure good. I, you know, I won't be wearing the flag because I know that that's not proper. But, like, I love on um, the 4th of July, just seeing everyone dressed in red, white, and blue. Right? Yes. It's, again, that, yep. se that sense of community and loyalty and union. Right. Right. What do you think? Yeah, and I, I, I think that's exactly what it is. It, you know, the whole point of the monument series was that, that you know, we, we don't erect monuments for perfect people because there are none. Right. You know, the flag does not represent a perfect country. It represents our country, and mm -hmm. it can't be perfect because none of us are perfect. But what I, what I love about the flag is the flag, get, just like a, a, a good monument, it grounds us in history, mm -hmm. and it propels us to, do, to strive for something better or to strive for the original meaning that was there when that flag or monument was first established. So I, you know, when I see the flag, it just reminds me of, of, of the sacrifice that's been made by so many for me to have the opportunity to live in this, this, this amazing country. Um, you know, I still, if I'm, if I'm at a ball game of some sort and they, they play the national anthem, I'll get 
teary eyed. It just, you know, Mm -hmm. my hand goes over my heart and, you know, certainly my hat comes off and, and I just realized it, 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 it says to me, you are part of something much bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what these things should do for us. And it should give us courage to, to continue to press on as, as the founding fathers said, to establish a more perfect union, not that perfection can ever be attained on this earth, and we always continue to, tr- to strive to fulfill that original design, that original vision. But the flag to me gives me that courage to do it. And so whenever I see, you know, I love driving and seeing huge flags flying. That was that the bigger the flag, the better. You know, it's like, <laughs> how in the world does that thing stay up there? Mm-hmm. Um, I did have a situation uh, when, when we moved into the building that Self Lock is in now, there was a flagpole, but for years there was never a flag on it before we bought the building. So one of the first things we did was we purchased a flag for the building, and we made sure that there was a light that would shine on that flag. And, and I remember one day, and it, it might have been like a March or early April day, and this gentleman comes in, and he wants to talk to the owner. Well, the owner wasn't there. Well, I want to talk to the next uh, president. So, and so they called me to the office. And and he noticed that our flag had a tear in it. Mm. And we actually had a spare flag because we, we just bought two. Because they if they're up enough, they're going to start to tear. And none of us had noticed it or we would have changed it. And, and he was so angry that he said, if you don't take that flag down immediately, I will call the media. And, and, and at first I'm like, you know sir, get a life. It's, you know, but then I realized, no, that flag meant something to him. Mm -hmm. You know, and I promised, I didn't say anything rude to him. I said, well, thank you for letting us know. And I will, I assure you that that flag will be changed out just as soon as we can get someone out to do that. You know, but it, he clearly noticed it. He was probably an older gentleman that had, you know, spent some time in a foreign land defending that flag and certainly didn't want it desecrated by some Lazy business people that just kept it up on the flagpole too long. So that's a warning to anybody. If you have a flag, make sure it's in good shape. Or you may be visited by someone who, rightfully so, takes offense to the fact that that flag was not cared for. That's all I got. Very interesting. I'll have to, you know, do some more flag research. I'm, I... I have always really appreciated our flag. I, you know, I love the meaning of the stars and of the stripes yes. and, and all of that. And it just makes me wonder, you know, I, I want to look up some other countries' flags and see where their design came from. Yeah, and what it, exactly. What it means for their countries. And, you know, and, and you, you brought up a really good point there. The, the meaning behind the colors, you know, the stripes. You know, the, the th- stripes the thir- actually starting out with 13, 13. colonies mm-hmm. as well. You know, um, but then the stars on this sea of re- of blue, and 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 when I look at other countries' star uh, flags, and some of them are like just three colors, I'm like, really? That's the best you could do? But then that's a little bit of American arrogance, which is never appreciated by all. So. <laughs> but it's true. You'd have to think like you couldn't do better than just like three colors. I never but. thought of that. I'll have to look it up. I, I mean, like, but I think know, there about must the, be a reason. the Italian flag, right? Like, I'm, I'm Italian, so I'll have to look up the Italian flag. Yeah, the, I think the German flag is just three colors. I think the Austrian flag is three colors mm-hmm. or two colors. Maybe the, two or, colors. maybe the order of the colors has some kind of it significance. Yeah, the Swiss flag is just red and white. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. But then yeah. again, maybe those flags were established long before. Our, who knows? I, mm-hmm. No, I don't think so. I, I honestly think in some of my research, um, we actually have one of the oldest flags, flag designs. I think there may only be one that's older, and it might be Great Britain's. And, and the reason is that countries did not typically have flags. There were... Um, no, I'm wrong. I'm thinking, I'm thinking governments. We have one of the oldest established governments because governments were changed. But my guess is that some of these countries might have had like feudal lords that had flags. I don't know. So for our listeners, just ignore everything I just said because it's probably not true. <laughs> and I have no idea where I'm going next. All right. I've got a couple monuments in mind. Um, 
Let's see if weather permits me to go look at them. But we'll have something here next week for sure. Sounds good. Any weekend plans? No. How about you? Nope. Nope. I, I'll probably work a little bit more on some of my the furniture that I have here in my office. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I'm going to just sit by a wood stove and stay warm till the spring comes, which yeah. is soon. <laughs> soon enough. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page. <laughs>